Assume in high semua. Uh, my name is T S Nur for example T ah here. Uh, as a um, lecture for course B M P two zero three zero three Highway Technology and Traffic Management. Okay, for today we will continue continue our online course regarding on the new chapter. Uh, uh, on the chapter six regarding on the traffic management and traffic control. Okay, so before we start, uh, go through for this chapter. Uh, we will see the chapter outline for this chapter. So for this chapter, we will cover the four topics. The first thing, first one is a traffic management and control. The second one is a parking. Third one is the intersection design principle and control. And last one is a traffic control signal. Okay, so let's we start for the part one uh, regarding on the traffic management and control. Okay, for this part one, we will cover definition and objective on the traffic management, reason for traffic management, problem due lake of the traffic management and the last one is the traffic management technique. Okay, let's we start. Okay, what is the traffic management? Traffic management is a process of, of adjusting or adapting the use of the existing road system to improve the traffic operation without resorting to major new construction. Okay, what about the objective of the traffic management? Why we need to do the traffic management? So, the objective of the traffic management are to ease the traffic concession, enhance road safety, improve traffic flow, improve the transportation of people and goods, reduce the impact of traffic on the environment, and the last one, to create and balance a model split. Okay. Why do we need to manage traffic? Kenapa kita nak kena uruskan traffic? Okay, so have a, a few reason uh, why we need to traffic management, to manage the traffic management. First, cause of the traffic congestion problem in the city. Sebab kita punya population on urban area is become high. So, they increase the vehicle ownership. So, dah ramai. Uh, especially is an urban area orang dah ada banyak kenderaan so some, sometimes uh, one person have a more, uh, more than one vehicle owner vehicle lah so the numbers of private automobiles especially is a travel in city is high and can cause the traffic jam right and then the second issue cause at the time public transport is affected by Jam. So, um, become a conflict between the private and public transport queue. So, it can cause the um, um, ke, uh, menyebabkan uh, disruption in public transport service. Then, passengers are become late for work, become stressed and also, and also exposed to fume, noise and heat. The third issue can cause the criticisms on new road construction. Road network are extend to accommodate increased numbers of vehicles that it doesn't to solve the problem of traffic jam. So it can use up the government fund and cause the securities of land. The next one is uh, is a become the negative impact on the environment and heart. So, kita akan gunakan kita punya penggunaan um, fuel yang tinggi, energy dia tinggi. So, can expose ke exhaust fume, heat, noise and cause the pollution and health problem. The, the next one is the mobility, accessibility and safety problem for non-motorized user especially to the pedestrian and cyclist. Can, can become a conflict between the pedestrian and cycling to motorized transport. This user find the hard to travel. I mean, become the pedestrian is hard to travel, access is intraded and their safety is at risk. So, they akan rasa berbahaya kepada diri. And the last one, 
uh, why we need uh, to manage the traffic because can cause the uh, in, uh, can increase the travel cost cost um, cost is a term of the money related to money and times so increase a more time is spent on the road due to the traffic jam so uh, when a uh, spend a lot of time on the road we can cause uh, the money can cause is okay so what the problem may occur if the traffic is not well managed can cause the traffic congestion, road accident, disruption of public transportation, adverse effect on environment, can cause the safety risk of for pedestrians and cyclists, increase the traffic cost, and the last one is the use up of fund and lands. Okay, we straightforward the traffic management techniques. So have a lot of the traffic techniques, but we need to categorize uh, the uh, the type of uh, we need to categorize the traffic management to determine what the suitable uh, technique will be applied regarding on the category so uh, in the man traffic management technique we will continue uh, category to the three parts first is the improved capacity second is a locate priority and the third one is a restraint so every single of the category have their own objective and techniques. So, for the first category, improve capacity, the objective is to efficient. Uh, uh, objective is to efficient use of fuel, reduce time uh, wastage, and the last one to promote and develop a warm economy. So, the suitable technique. To comply the category and objective of the category is link and injunction, uh, link injunction improvement, uh, on street parking and training restriction, traffic signal improvement, one way and tidal flow management, and the last one in the road make markings and signing improvements. Okay. So the second category is the allocate parity. The objective for this category are to protect uh, road user, vulnerable road user, increase if effectiveness of the high occupancy vehicle. So the suitable technique for this category and achieve the objective uh, for this category are like a pedestrian area, cycle lane, bus and HOV lanes, selective detection at signal and the last one is H exemption for another regulation so the last category is the restraint the objective is to improve public amenity protect environment and to improve safety so the te technique will be applied for the category is a traffic climbing parking controls physical restraint area licensing and road pricing so uh, we will further explain uh, on the single type of the category and the suitable technique will be uh, determined on the type of the category for traffic management. Okay, so we go through uh, for, the, for further detail on the first category is uh, improved capacity. Okay, so we go through the link and session. Okay, so... Uh, for the first category, we go for the example technique link and junction improvement. So, the objective for use the link and junction improvement are to increase the capacity, enhance safety, reduce delay and control speed. If a four types of the link junction improvement will be applied. First thing, provide channelized and traffic islands. So, like this. We use the roundabout, roundabout, so have a island here, right? So, so using the roundabout and island, we will channelize our traffic, the correct position and control the capacity on the road. The second one is the use traffic signals. So using the traffic lights, okay? 
Step 1, increase safe crossing for pedestrian. So, kita provide large waiting area. Uh, pedestrian refuse and shorter crossing distance. Like this lah for this picture. This adalah treatment for crossing at the intersection. Ni ada crossing at mid block. See, ini ada a few uh, intersection on the road. Come at the big uh, junction and the, a lot of the junction. Ini just nak cross another one junction, uh, another one area to another one area. So, just use the mid block. Okay. The last uh, um, uh, task is a control speed on the approach. So, we use the neck down here at the intersection to reduce the speed when we are turning for this area. Okay. The next technique for the improved capacity is the on-street parking trading restriction. Okay. Parking and loading quota should be implemented on the main traffic road, especially during peak hour. Okay. And near pedestrian movement. For like, uh, example, like we apply the line, we show the no parking area. So, uh, the sign, zone tunda. So, whatever single vehicle park there, akan ada zone tunda for the area. So, assign no parking. This one is a loading issue. Right? So, we re decide what the uh, time and day we will do, uh, we will allow for loading and uh, unloading time. So, ada uh, days and times. Right? So, benefit of parking of the division uh, uh, relieve the traffic congestion, improve your safety, improve the visibility for and of pedestrians who want to cross the area. So, when uh, on the street parking restrict is enforced, kita akan provide sufficient of street parking space. So, tak adalah simply, simply uh, vehicle will park at the uh, curve area, of the curve area of the road. So, they akan park on the off parking space as per provided. Then, designated load area must be allocated for loading activity. So, whatever area, especially for the uh, uh, building have a loading and unloading area. So, they can provide uh, uh, allocate area for this activity. So, loading can be permit only on the back line. So, we not encourage, we are uh, use the front road to uh, do the activity loading and unloading. So, we prefer at the back line, we can uh, wait access only for good vehicle. So, it's example like this lah. We just parking at the back of the building for do the activity loading. Right. So, kat sini ada a few single uh, signs of loading and unloading. This one needs no parking. It's a loading unloading area. 24 hours CCTV area in operation. So, there is ni no parking area lah. So, no provide for any vehicle park that escape the loading activity. Okay, the next one is the one-way streets. Advantages we use the one-way street is it to reduce a conflict point, increase the capacity, increase the speed and flow, reduce delay, eliminate heads on collision, eliminate desert, and last one is easier for pedestrians to cross the road. Okay, so it's a, like example, a sign uh, is a one-way street. So example is a sign like this, then determine the time. So, this is a one way dari pukul pagi hingga tengah hari. Dia ada duration times. Dia akan berlaku one way street. Okay. So, yang ni dia sign one way. No enter like this lah. This uh, this uh, no entering. Example like this. Okay. The next is the turning and entry restriction. Di mana kita akan nampak ada sign. No turn right. No turn left. No you turn. Example like this. Turning restriction may be imposed if the road is not able to accommodate large volume of vehicles. So, maksudnya, no right turn for um heavy vehicle, just light vehicle. If the manoeuvre is obstructive and dangerous, no U-turn. 
If the road junction geometry is not adequate design for the turning movement for large vehicle, we determine the large vehicle only. Anti registration may be imposed for one way street scheme, certain period for the day for the certain vehicle classes. Example, like yes, ah, I mentioned lah, certain height je boleh use, that certain vehicle je boleh use this road. This one, they tak boleh turn right. So, Whatever vehicle yang cross kat sini, dia tak boleh turn right. Just boleh straight away saja. Ini dimension is a one way. But it's no for heavy vehicle like trucks and buses. Right? Okay, so this one is a kenderaan ringan sahaja. So, just boleh you think untuk dia dah design. Just boleh comply untuk uh, light vehicle only. Kat sini pun ada one of the example. They determine for the heavy vehicle, uh, for this road, for, uh, for this highway, ada certain time je boleh cross this area, for boleh use for this road. Okay. Other than time, so not allowed. Alright. Next is the contract flow. Yeah, like a tidal flow and reverse flow. It's the ones of the types. Um... Uh, when we apply a control flow, uh, apabila ada imbalance in the recent displacement of traffic during peak hour. Like example, like the picture, whatever for this area, have a large major tool, they just boleh across and open this area and allow any vehicle to just um, cross and use this land. Is a contract flow. Traffic is uh, on the one direction it exists while the traffic on the opposite direction is low. Okay, justify when 65% or more of the total traffic during the peak period in one direction. So, one lane is the lower volume direction is used for traffic on the higher volume direction. This lane is a separated using barricade, channelized, Device and provide with proper signs. Okay, this is a contract flow. Okay, so we go through the next category. For the next category techniques, uh, category for the allocate parity, the technique will be applied. Example, like a pedestrian secretion. Okay, separate decision is from vehicle vehicular traffic. The objective is. This technique is to reduce pedestrian vehicle conflicts, to enhance pedestrian safety, and to enforce no jaywalking regulation. Okay, this is the objective for the pedestrian segregation techniques. So this is a few picture. Uh, for the pedestrian segregation, the one is a pedestrian guardrail. This is a one a guardrail. We will separate the road lane. And the pedestrian. See the pedestrian area. This one is the road lane. This one is the guardrail. Guardrail is a divided and separated between pedestrian and the vehicle. We use and the road. Okay, this one example also like this. And then pedestrian persons. This one just allow for pedestrian only the light um like uh lights um areas like petaling street uh like um dataran something like that so just allow any just allow pedestrian only to use the area okay then is um uh, using plant streets so ada buat plant streets to separate the pedestrians this one are the plant street to separating. So, example like this, right? Okay. The next technique is the cycling segregation. So, ada allocate the special lane for cyclists. Example like this. Uh, this is some of the kind of pictures in the KL, right? So, ada special bus lane. So, this a uh, special lane for bus. So, any vehicle rather than bus, not allowed to use this lane, right? Uh, HOV is a high occupancy vehicle lane. Uh, it's just 
uh, allows uh, HOV vehicle to use this. So, dia punya symbol like this. Right? So, dia ada dia punya regulation. Will be as a consider as the high occupancy vehicle. Alright. The next is bus parity. Okay, bus parity is we use the smart intersection. Uh, smart intersection uses bus detector to manipulate traffic signal which allow green face for buses. Uh, di mana? When we are bus go through for the intersection, uh, the traffic controller will be detect the buses. So, automatic either the vehicle on the intersection become a red color or we will stop any vehicle and allow buses to pass away the intersection. So, it's the bus priority. Type of detection system like a long lock, no equipment on bus, traffic data induction communication, in the thing infrared communication system, and last is the SLE microwave communication. For the next category is a traffic restraint. Type of the traffic restraint I measure for the four types. First is do nothing. The minor driver will eventually make trip during off peak periods. Choose to use alternative route and take alternative mode of transport. And the second type is a physical measure. Banning of probably anti of certain classes vehicle like example as a introduction of B bus and HOV lanes, bicycle lane, pedestrian presence, and etc. The third uh, traffic uh, type of the traffic restraints is a regulation measure like a parking and waiting and loading control. Impose stiffer penalty and fine if regulation are violated. Limit this one is the importance. Limit the number of parking space in the city. Impose the higher tax for parking operation. And last step is the fiscal measure like a vehicle tax, fuel tax, road pricing and area license. So, we go to some of the picture and example on the traffic rest restraint. Like a traffic climbing. The traffic climbing is the involved change in the straight alignment installation of barrier and other physical measure to reduce traffic spill and or cut it through the volume in the interest of the strict safety liability and other public purposes so other a few types of the traffic climbing first is a vertical deflection deflection like a speed harm speed bump speed lump speed table right crossword speed cushion traces Pavement right intersection. Some of kind of need are applied in the Malaysia. Some of need is not applied in the Malaysia. Right. So, the second one is the horizontal deflection. Like a traffic circle, like a small roundabout. The roundabout, second. And the last one is the horizontal narrowing. Like a neck down, central island narrowing and choker. And this is the kind to control the speed of vehicle when we are turning uh, turning or channelize the one uh, channelize the uh, vehicle okay next is a control over access and de development di mana kita we are need to identify what is the bad planning for the development is the better and safer plan what example like this picture show uh, this is the bad planning as uh, the houses they directly access the main road. Okay, every single house houses can access directly as uh, to the main road. And for the future development on the opposite one, this is the opposite in future. And on the more access point on the road, so I can add the banyak access of to the main road. So they akan menyebabkan risiko to the accidents. Okay, so the better uh, and safer plane like this one we can propose okay we not allow the direct access to the main so um kita connect kita jangan allow these houses to the main road so kita 
access to service road this it connect to the main road so kita buat direction okay so we access the back area so i said you can access and channelize to the one area to access the main road is a better and lot safer for the vehicle for the housing area okay so next standing is the enforced traffic law okay the traffic law enforcement is the mean to achieve safe and the efficient movement for all road user including pedestrians okay stiffer fines and penalties should be imposed on the traffic offenders in order to prevent repeat offense so kita nak control any single of the vehicle or any single as um owner of the vehicle or other users to follow the rule on regulation on the road okay regulation patrol should be made by the law enforced enforced then road user will be learned to respect other road user and become more responsible and tolerant this some of the kind of the picture we show the um regulation uh we will um enforce uh for the all the uh, owner of the vehicle then speed limit and speed zone so we are put the sign speed limit and speed uh, speed zone for the certain certain area to control the vehicle speed speed control can be achieved to the imposing speed limit the implement impl and implementing speed zone speed limit should be realistic depend on the road design standard road design standard road geometry and type of area so we need to um determine the speed limit depends of the condition of the road not the simply simply determine the speed limit speed zone should be introduced at area we hide pedestrian activities such as at the school example like here sekolah hak laju 30 km per jam okay enforcement is a vital road signing pavement and marking and traffic climbing can complement this speed limit and speed zone right this is some of the picture show the speed limit and speed zone this one hak laju maxima this maxima speed limit right next is managing having good vehicle hav HIV. HIV a nuisance to traffic, cause the damage to road pavement, <clears throat> impedes traffic. When involved in accident, can cause serious injury and damage or be fatal. Right. So, area-wide HIV management scheme: the provision of the HIV from entering or passing an area of section of the road. HIV corners can be used to prevent through movement while steam permit access. Um, then for the off peak travel for HIV, HIV are permit to use specified road only during off peak period. Example like this, right? Loading restriction, example like this. Hmm. Implement during peak period to ensure traffic not impact on the major road deliver. And collation can be met early in the morning and late at night. In pedestrian area, they must be done using re-serving facilities. So, not simply, simply any loading and unloading area. To the next technique on the traffic restraint is a providing for public transport. This is encouraging the use of public transport is the best solution to reduce congestion by reducing private automobiles so we control uh, the private vehicle uh, and in, with the encouraged uh, most of people to use the public transport so the problem is with the public transport service is adequate service during peak hour overcrowding delay and inconsistent schedule Transit facilities area are deflowered state, high fare for the post service and the last one is a journey is too long. Right? So the best solution to solve the problem is you 
We provide the lights a bus rapid trans transit, like a busway, inclusive bus lane, and bus track. Next, the light rail transit, like monorail, express rail transit, and bullet train. And then, improvement of the trans transit facilities, like the picture below here. Okay, next is regarding on the parking to provide all tourist streets. It must be recognized that parking demand is always high in the central business district, we call it as a CBD. Types and the fuel is a wasted, while congestion and population is created by motorists driving around the, to find parking space. So we will become the congestion and pollution. Therefore, provision of adequate parking space is necessary. So we make sure adequate parking space for the area. Illegal parking is right and often. Pedalists and footpaths are encouraged. This couple with on-street parking create an accident risk for pedestrians as they become incompetent and they are forced onto the roadway. There's adequate off-street parking facilities like a multi-story car parks, parking lots, basement parking should be provided. So, kita kena pastikan off-street is provided. But should be a limit because it may encourage more people to use the private automine. So, kita kena juga control on the way to kita nak kurangkan on uh, most of people uh, have their own private automines. Alright. Okay, the use of private automobiles can be discouraged through parking distribution. So, kita buat distribution of parking, limitation of parking space. High parking fee, high test for parking operator. Right? So, city planner will then have to shift the demand of parking away from the CBD. They provide ample parking at the mass transit concession, trains and LRT station. Provide park and ride facilities. Create satellite car parks. Right? This is the example picture. Okay, next is regarding on the network traffic management. Okay, first is uh, use the ATM, a call as an active traffic management. It's a dynamical manage and control traffic based on prevailing condition using integrated system and coordinate in response both recurrent and non-recurrent consumption can be managed to provide improved route away safety and outputs. So they have a, a few techniques on the ATM. The first one is the speed harmony. So we show the speed limit for the area. Q warning. So they are commercial warning. Ram metering. So they mention is ram is how long the metering. So dynamic message signs. So they are the inform lah, are the accidents uh, and warning to all of um uh, apa ni? Uh, pemandu uh, to make sure um, uh, uh, drive in the safe cause as well accident and become a slowdown. Therefore, is the temporary shoulder use. So, kat sini kita boleh guna the temporary for the certain certain situation. Automated speed enforcement kita ada ni to control the speed limit on the road for all of single class of vehicle and then the dynamic rerouting and traveling information right so dynamic late marking so kat sini ada dynamic late marking and travel time signs so the mention lah untuk sampai ada a few minutes lagi untuk arrive for the location right the next is a technique is a IT IS ataupun kita panggil dia as a intelligent traffic management system. The aim of the IT is to improve the planning and traffic flow in the city. Okay. Um, brief traffic info of what to expect along the way. Like example like road injection, congestion will offer both motorists or commuters to decide which road to take the gate best time to travel faster, safer and easier. TIS integrate prison road transport network and communication interface at the particular area. The process of ITS ni adalah TMS, 
traffic management serve as the hub of the entire ITS system as it receives the receive, process and disseminate the real type of traffic info. System operator will then use this info to monitor the transport system operation and formulate strategy to enhance the traffic transport management. Right? Need example like DBKL to control their traffic with using ITS system. ITIS system. Okay, the traffic situation monitoring. So the monitoring using the using with the CCTV AI AIDS, AVLS. Data is a gather to be sent to the TMN, TMC. Maps produced based on the real time data recorded, like the congestion map, incident map. Info is disseminated via VMS, call center, and internet. It is uh, the ITS benefit is to allow road user and committed to choose mode and schedule, so they will determine. Enables uh, real time capture traffic info for incident management and long term planning. Elevate traffic congestion, reduce accidents, improve emergency assistance for motorists and commuters, reduce traffic travel time, reduce pollution. Provide comfort, safety, security, improve utilization ability for road safety and improve the quality of flights. Okay, so this is the technique we will apply for the traffic management. Okay. So that's all for today. We will continue the next part on the part 2 for the chapter. Okay, thank you all of you. Okay, see you the next step, uh, the next part. Bye.